Okay. So, um, so any questions based on what we looked at um, in chapter 10? If there are any questions um, or any further thoughts, we can look at that. So um, I hope you know we have clarity in why one should refuse, if at all one is refusing food offered to idols, the reason you know um, for that, or if you are just going to be praying and eating, um, and also you know the the reason for that, right? So uh, and also the whole thing of the the significance of the Lord's table and the significance of uh, you know the 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 Lord or uh, uh, the table of demons, right? So the whole thing of fellowship, the whole thing of coming in partnership and being a partaker, right? where you're where you're receiving something into your life. So all that is uh, uh, is the significance of the Lord's table and the parallel or the counterfeit is, you know, what uh, what was there in Co Corinthian culture as the table of demons, right? So, so we understand where Paul is coming from, you know, while he, well, there is the revelation of authority, there is the revelation of, uh, you know, uh, that who you are in Christ, the greater one is in you, and so forth. You don't have to fear anything, and uh, you know, the Lord, all the Holy Spirit, always leads you into truth and where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty and all that right so while so you know with that background when we look at when we consider this you know we see that okay it's from the perspective of being a partaker paul doesn't want you to do that it's from the perspective of being a stumbling block a barrier for someone's faith definitely you know paul doesn't want i mean god doesn't want you want us to do that so so it is it is this you know, these are some of the reasons, right? Any questions? Further questions? Everybody's clear. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's move on to the next uh, chapter. Right. So we're looking at uh, chapter eleven, right? Okay, chapter eleven. Okay, so um, chapter 11, Paul starts by saying, uh, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. So first of all, it makes this very, uh, you know, very, um, I don't know, bold statement, very radical statement, imitate me, right? Uh, as but uh, the second part is very important. He's saying, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. So, in all the things where I imitate Jesus, right, where I follow Jesus, uh, you imitate me. So, that is what it means. Right? It also means that Paul is making such a statement of humility where he's saying that his life. As a bond servant of Christ, where he, you know, many of the epistles he starts by saying that, right? The bond servant of Christ and um, bond servant of God, and so on. So, um, so if you know, when Paul is saying that, that um, it's a statement of humility, where he's saying that I'm, I'm just sold out to God, I'm sold out to Christ, and I'm imitating Christ in all areas of my life. So you imitate me, right? It's a, it's a confident statement. But it's also a statement of great humility, right? And so, uh, it's something for us to, you know, something that challenges us. Where can I make that statement, right? Uh, maybe there are certain areas of our lives where we can make that statement and say, you know, imitate me as I imitate Christ. But what about the rest of the areas of our lives, right? That's something for us to grow into, um, right? Uh, and he says, "I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you." So, traditions meaning most likely it is about uh, uh, you know these are precepts these are uh, some principles and some commandments that is laid down and so he doesn't specifically say what these traditions are right um, sorry um, 
yeah so he doesn't specifically say okay these are the traditions and and so on so uh, but most likely these are the sacraments of the church right when it comes to water baptism when it comes to um the lord's table communion and so on right most likely it is that okay now as we read through the rest of uh, the scripture of the rest of the verses it's it's for us we need to understand especially he's going to be talking about um you know uh at at that point seemed to be a contentious thing even now it seems to be a you know a kind of uh, thing where a lot of debate on it right so uh, let's uh, read through some of these verses and then look at um, what he is referring to okay um, verse 3 now i want you to know that the head of every man is christ the head of woman is man and the head of christ is god every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonors his head but every woman who prays and prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved for if a woman is not covered let her also be shorn for it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved let her be covered for a man indeed ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of god but woman is the glory of man for man is not from woman but woman from man nor was man created for the woman but woman for the man for this reason the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels nevertheless neither is man independent of woman nor woman independent of man in the lord for as woman came from man even so man also comes from woman but all things are from god judge among yourselves is it proper for a woman to pray to god with her head uncovered does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair it is a dishonor to him but if a woman has long hair it is a glory to her for her hair is given to her for a covering but if anyone seems to be contentious we have no such custom nor do the churches of god okay so um so let's look at some of these verses before we go into this verse now we need to understand that uh, the difference between truth right revelation that is there in scripture truth and culture okay culture or tradition so when we look at truth truth is timeless truth is eternal truth is not bound to a certain certain place a certain country a certain group of people no truth is truth which cut, cuts across all geographical locations all kinds of people um whatever period of time it is right so there's no it, it is for all right whereas culture it could be specific to a certain place geographical location and even in that geographical location it could be specific to a certain group of people certain ethnicity and so on so that's culture right so when we look at those portions in scripture there are certain things that are ref, that are cultural we need to you know understand that and there are certain sections we where we, i mean and and most of the sections where we see that it is the eternal truth of god so which means that when we know the difference distinguish between this is the eternal truth of god and this is culture then we get clarity on the application of it meaning in the obedience of it in carrying it out and also in instructing others in it right so if we if we you know if we don't discern this rightly then we would command or instruct people in what is in what is culture rather than what is truth right so then it becomes an issue then it becomes a problem so that we need to understand okay so now this whole thing of covering head covering okay so there are two things that uh, that are referred to here right one in in this passage if you see he's talking about a divine order and a divine um uh, uh authority or what we call as spiritual headship right 
So that is something that is being addressed in this passage here. Okay. Secondly, he is also talking about a cultural thing, which is the covering, physical covering of the head. Okay. So this, when, when it comes to spiritual headship or divine authority, uh, when we say divine authority, we're saying, okay, this is how God designed, right? for example, family, for example, church, and so on. There is a divine order of authority that he has placed. Right? So that, what is the intention? Not that it will be abused, not that people can be, you know, uh, uh, will not have freedom, not that some gender, you know, uh, uh, like the will have to be uh, in submission all the time or enslaved. That is not the that is not the objective of it. The objective is that so that society will function well, so that things will function the way it was designed to function. It will thrive and flourish. So that's the only objective of God, right? So, so we see this divine authority. We see this, um, you know, in in place. Right? So, um, so, so, several things that we see uh, when it comes to headship and all that. Things like uh, women in ministry. Things like the Lord's table, um, which is instituted. You know, these are truth. And we see several scriptures attesting to it. Okay, several scriptures talking about this truth. Okay, uh, if you look at the notes, we know it's it's clearly mentioned there. We won't go into all these verses, but you know you can study it. Then the second column talks about certain things that are cultural and certain things that are specific to that church of that location. Okay, so when it comes to head covering, when it comes to you know the Lord's table, and also when it comes to this whole thing of women being silent, right? So he, two instances, you know, especially about women being silent, he's talking to the, he's instructing the church in Corinth. He's also instructing the church in Ephesus, right? What we see in First Timothy, that instruction, right? So we need to know what is cultural, what is specific for that particular time period, and what is the truth. Okay. So with that, let's look at, uh, you know. Um, Let's look at verse 3 onwards. So he says, I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So um, he's talking about spiritual authority. He's talking about divine order. Okay, um, Or what we can say as God's government. Okay, Now that word which is used there, the head of man, uh, head of woman, and he uses that word man, woman, it refers to any male. But also, it could specifically refer to the husband, okay, a married man, a husband, right? Again, that word which is used for woman could also refer to the female gender, but specifically, it could refer to the woman who's married, meaning the wife, okay? So when he's talking to the head of the woman is the man, he's talking about a married situation, right? So he's talking about a marriage. In a marriage, he's talking, saying that the head of the wife is the husband. And Ephesians chapter 5 talks about, you know, how that the head should actually interact, right, to, with, the, with, the, with the wife, right? The, how the husband, being the head, should interact with the wife, how the wife, um, you know, being part or being subject to the head should interact with the husband. Right? For example, if you look at, um, you know, Ephesians chapter 5, right, let's look at uh, that verse. So that we don't, we get this headship in the right order, right, in the right perspective. Okay. Because sometimes it is taught in the wrong manner. It is taught, you know, even this whole thing is uh, of submission is taught in the wrong way. It's therefore, you know, people get hurt. People apply it in the wrong way. People really demand this whole thing of submission. So that is not um, that is not the intent, right? So when we look at Ephesians chapter five and um, you know verse verse twenty one, right? We see he's saying submitting to one another in the fear of God. Okay, so he's talking about different different 
uh, different age groups and different people, and he's saying submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord, which means there is this mutual submission that he talks about. Then he goes on to say, verse 22, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Okay. Then for the he says, verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. So he's talking about spiritual headship, God's government, God's design. This is how God has put it. And he's in the context of marriage and in the context of the church as well. So, right? so he's the savior of the body because Christ is the head of the church. And so in a similar manner, when we consider a marriage, uh, we see that husband is the head of the wife. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their husbands, own husbands in everything. Okay. So it is one, it's talking about one marriage situation, you know, in, within that one marriage, right? So it's not talking about, you know, within that husband and wife. Sorry, that's what I meant. Right? So it was 25 husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, cleanse her, etc. Right? And so he's saying, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, and so on. And then, so that is the thing. So when he says, wives, submit to your husbands, and, uh, you know, husbands, uh, first of all, about that mutual submission, and then he says, okay, this is how it needs to be. This is now it needs to be worked out practically, where the husband loves the wife as Christ loved the church. Okay. So we know that is the perspective. So when he says the head of the woman is a man, he's talking about the husband, the wife, and it's not about any man or any woman, right? Where you're saying, okay, this, this woman should be subject to the, that man. No. The head of every man is Christ. This is for every believer. And the head of Christ is Father. The Son is the Father. So we know that the triune God, is, they are co-equal. John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And so the triune God, co-equal, right? Nobody's bigger than the rest. But in terms of the responsibility in what they did, we see that the Lord Jesus willingly chose, willingly submitted to the Father and uh, that is what made this whole thing of the cross and salvation and everything, the design of it. You know, he chose to come and die on our part, right, in our place. So, which means that male and female, men and women are co-equal, like First Peter 3 talks about, they are co-heirs with God, right? And there is no, you know, one gender is above the other. No. Galatians 3 talks about that. So, so all this is Right. All this is uh, the scriptural truth, right? So just like how a husband, a believing man submits to the Lordship of Christ, okay, following Christ's example and so on, so also the submission of the uh, wife to the husband. Okay. So now, um, verse, uh, let's look at, um, yeah. So he's talking about um, you know every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. So now he's talking about you know uh, in that Corinthian culture um, again, he's, when he's talking about the woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, he's talking about that culture. He's going to talk about more in the following verses. So he's saying, for if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn, and so on. So what is, what is happening in that culture? In that culture, uh, we see that, well, as in the Jewish culture, women covered their head, right? All the women covered their head. Now, who were the women who will not cover their head, right? These were women who were seen as rebellious, who were seen as adulterous, who were seen as people who were having an immoral, you know, lifestyle, being a, you know, like a, like in this temple worship, the, the, the prostitutes who were there, so they would not cover their head. Okay, so in the church, Corinthian church, we had they had people of 
from these situations coming into the church. Right? We know that. So Paul had to write to them and to bring some kind of an order about, but which was something cultural, which was affecting them spiritually. Right? Just like you know the the kind of uh, diet which people had where unbelievers and believers i mean sorry uh, jewish believers and gentile believers and the council had to write to them and say okay this is what you need to keep away from for the sake of maintaining order uh, and because of the you know multi ethnic multicultural gathering that was happening right so in the same way so he talks about this you know, about the covering of the head. Um, for if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. So, which means he's saying, let her head be shaved. Does that mean that, you know, if, if a woman does not cover her head, this should be the consequence of it? No. That is what sometimes, you know, people have taken to believe that, hey, this is a harsh thing. If you know, that should be the punishment or that should be the consequence of someone who's not covering their head. No. Right. Um, so, so he's saying that you know this was this was the culture that a woman who was a prostitute would shave the head or even in you know like a same sex kind of a relationship like a lesbian they would shave the head so he's talking about that and he's saying you know um this is what it is this is what culture refl reflects so let them cover their head at the same time, he was also he's also talking about the spiritual aspect of headship. Uh, he's bringing that out as well, right? So he's talking about man being created uh, for uh, man is not from woman, but woman is from man, and so on, referring to how how was man and how was woman created originally. But he also goes on to say, you know, that was how it was. But then we know that woman all man also comes from woman. Right, women, men are born um, through this process of a woman giving birth. So, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man. Right. So, so that's that's the thing. So, when he says in verse thirteen, "Judge among yourselves," it is is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? He's referring again to the cultural thing. And now I know, you know, while in Indian culture also, in, and some of the Indian churches, um, there is this whole thing of head covering, which has come. One is culture itself, where you know people cover their head, uh, women cover their head. And the thing is, they take this, say, OK, when I need to worship, I need to cover their head, and or wear a scarf, or you know, I think the Catholic churches, that, that scarf is there. You know, So that is there. So while you know, it's fine, that's their belief. That is the that is what they are following. It's fine, no problem, right? Um, even like uh, some of the even you know I, I remember when we uh, when we used to go to church, and my mother would uh, she was wearing a sari, but then she would take that pallu and then you know put that cover you know when stepping into church. That's how. Uh, so that's we see that is slowly not happening, um, and so you know the reason is because of you know this. The why they do it is because of this. Okay, and also another verse where, um, verse ten. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. You know now, various interpretations saying angels are there to you know bring some kind of uh, whatever judgment or whatever. But the thing is this that the church is supposed to reflect or manifest the glory of God to the heavenly beings. You know, we see that um, uh, to the angelic beings, right? Ephesians three ten. See to the intent that now the manifest manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. You know, talking about even the angelic beings and so on. So, uh, so that is what Paul is talking about. That you know, in doing so, you you actually. Uh, make known the wisdom of God, make known the revelation of God, uh, or the church is being an example, reflecting the glory of God and the wisdom of God, even to the angelic beings. Okay, so, 
So that's the thing. It's not that the angelic beings are going to bring something or something bad is going to happen if a woman does not cover her head. Right. So uh, that is something that we need to understand. But as we, as we, you know, as the passage progresses, we see that this is how he brings it this topic to a close where he says that if anyone seems to be contentious meaning hey if you're arguing or debating to and fro about this whole thing says we have no such custom right nor do the churches of god so he's talking to all the churches so is is what he's saying about the covering is uh, is for that corinthian church because the corinthian culture the women were you know uh, of if the women did not cover it meant something and if the women had bald, I mean, if they had shaved their head, it meant something because of a particular lifestyle, uh, immoral lifestyle, and so on. So he's saying it's better if you cover your head for the women. Right? And verse 16, he puts the matter to rest where he's saying that if anyone seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, custom nor do the churches of God. Okay, so yeah. Any questions on this? Any thoughts um, on this? Yeah. So uh, when we read this part plainly without any uh, background yeah. or yeah. yeah, so people will take it literally like this only. You know, should I mean only now recent times few churches take the pain to see the cultural, cultural aspect and, and all. Yeah. Otherwise, they just take by the letter. Yeah. And that's it. No, that's how. Even uh, the husband, wife, I've seen even today, all around, it's like you're like a second class citizen or you're one step down. Right. Whether it's home, whether it's ministry, you know, so many things. Yes. Uh, so that's the thing where, where Paul says to Timothy I, over and over again, you know, rightly divide the word of God. Uh, and uh, so that's the. Uh, the importance of rightly dividing the word of God, because our wrong believing or wrong uh, you know discerning leads to wrong believing and then and then a life uh, yeah yeah so that is how you know uh, like uh, what not anyone is saying anybody can make it a law uh, and or a commandment and say this is how it must be done across board across churches but if we look at how the topic ends we realize that Paul is saying, you know, we don't have any such customs. You know, we don't have, nor do the churches of God. So, so it's not a, it's a peripheral thing again, right? Right. right. That aspect, that verse 16, uh, nobody seems to, because, because, see, let's say a church has very strongly ingrained this as part of their culture. Because I, I remember, you know, being part of a, like a short-term Bible college, and this was in Chhattisgarh. And it, again, one of the rural this thing, and so, uh, well, the ladies who came there, some of them had covered, some of them had not. But then we were about to take a class photograph, you know, after the graduation. So, so I remember one of the elders saying, "Come on, where are you this thing? Where is? Why are you not uh, this thing?" So he went around telling the young girls, you know, cover your head, where are you this thing. So that is the prevailing thing. I know we can actually wrongly. Uh, impose this, you know, on people. But when people come to know the truth, right, uh, there will be change. That's the thing. Sorry, that takes that. Uh, yeah, that's seen as a sign of rebellion. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like uh, both are okay. If you cover your head, that's also okay. If you don't cover your head, right. that's also fine. Right? right, that's fine. Absolutely. I think that verse sixteen is what is what is important. You know, while we read everything, verse sixteen is important. Where he's saying hey, there's, there's no no. Don't be contentious about this. Meaning, um, don't have a quarrelling about this. If there are any quarrel about this thing, women should be like this. Women should not be like this. Um, He's saying we we have no such customs, right? So, and the reason he takes he shares this is because there was a problem there 
because of head covering because there were women like you said you know there were these temple prostitutes who were coming to know the lord there were others who were there uh, maybe adulterers whatever and by uh, you know like uh, it was their lifestyle not to cover their head now they've come to the lord and now paul is saying this you know you you're in a gathering with others who are Uh, believers and and it's a respectable thing in that culture to cover so therefore you know you cover right so that's the thing so as a pastor what would you teach you know if there is a culture right if there is a uh, give them the freedom right if you're comfortable doing it do it and then the thing is you will face questions right if you're leading a church uh, especially uh, you know wherever you know north whatever you will face questions people will come and ask especially the men will come and ask this person is not you know these uh, these young people are not doing it uh you know what do you have to say you have to teach on it etc <laughs> then those are the times when you need to you know say, give them the liberty okay it's fine uh but if they are not doing it that is also fine it's a peripheral issue the core issue is um you know the cross and salvation and all the things which those are the core things which you, you the word of god and the spirit of god those are the things that you not you are not supposed to compromise and yeah hopefully that will be a teaching moment for the church as well right um so like we did some some years back we um, we did a series called reasons the reasons the title so it will be nice you know if you can actually look into the you uh, listen to the uh, message called series called reason so some of the things why we do what we do you know so it talks about all these things uh, discerning between truth and culture and and all those things you know is it okay to pray to have a picture and pray you know all those things so it's um, so you know in the church also it can it can actually be very liberating for the church to be rooted in the truth and it can be a teaching moment to the truth when uh, teaching teaching moment for the church sorry when these kind of questions come up definitely you'll face right yeah especially yes exactly and not only in north even in south when we go to some of the rural these things we'll face so yeah yeah you have a question nikhil so pastor uh, uh, as we know that uh, this corona this is uh, written for corinthian church about yeah. head covering yeah but they still like in in my place like many pastor they are preaching like they are preaching that this yeah this is I for know. everyone so uh, how to tell them and uh, like what and one more reference is there oh. deuteronomy 22 mm-hmm. says i see that uh, women should not wear uh, men's men's clothing so um, they'll take that also mm. and they will preach that women should not wear jeans also like this this oh, okay. all things so like how to tell they will say if it is there then show us that reference that god says okay you wear all things whatever you want oh so like that then how to tell the, the, those people yeah so about uh, outfits what we wear you know see that is also something you know which means that uh, you can't wear salwar you know like uh, if you if you look at a kurta pajama that a man wears and uh, a salwar that it, it's almost the same maybe except for the dupatta even the the man also wears something like a you know so the so if you look at it strictly you would see that hey, they are actually wearing you know so what was the reason why god you know put that there and uh, i re- really haven't studied that part of it in deuteronomy but the fact is that uh, you know if if a woman is trying to be like the opposite gender in terms of in terms of a behavior in terms of wanting to usurp the authority or you know going against this divine order maybe and so those are things that we need to address right so uh, or in terms of um, like you know again homosexuality and same sex behavior and all that so um, so those are the issues to be addressed but when it comes to you know these kind of things um, it's it's actually a peripheral issue yes we will face questions the pastor will maybe ask you know other pastors will ask you know in your church why are you not you know teaching like this and so on so um so we if you're specifically looking at 1 corinthians 10 or 1 corinthians 11 we we need to share the whole counsel and say that this is what it is now uh, another reason why you know churches or pastors might be very vehement about this is because 
it so closely reflects the culture of that place also right you know where women were sorry women were it married women power they had right so um, so that so the thing is uh, it it really reflects the culture so when you give them an option then it's like wow this person is going against culture this person is going against the traditions of this place you know that's uh, that's the reason why they are so vehement uh, in things uh, but i guess one needs to be strong like um, one needs to i don't know you know even women in ministry and uh, there's so much of you know thing uh, when we, whenever we have these pastors meetings then these women who've been really ministering pastoring leading others and uh this is the complaint you know there's so much of attack every day is a struggle so much of attack and so on so we just need to encourage them to be strong and uh, continue strong in the truth in the faith right even though also we understood that uh, uh we have to do according to culture but uh, in in city also they will preach same like this if mm. they are not accepting they'll make them to accept these things mm. they will preach like this so uh, many times uh, when i went to visit in one place okay so that family is living in city okay said so they, they were telling hey you are preaching wrong why are you telling this uh, that women should not do like this to them and one pastor they they were telling like mm. they told us to do like this all things but they were living in city they their culture was different mm. but that pastor changed that uh -huh. things yeah happens um only thing is uh, see ultimately you are accountable to god and um, you know what is the what is the congregation experiencing in terms of truth in terms of liberty like paul writes about that right so um uh, and uh, see which verse is that the whole thing of um, certain restrictions where uh i forget the reference where he talks about you know do not touch do not taste do not handle um uh, i don't know if it's paul or peter it's talking about you know uh even worship of angels and all. i think it's peter uh, worship of angels and he's saying okay these have you know have a form of religion it seems to have some kind of a wisdom but they are of no use against the indulgence of the flesh so meaning you know this seem to have a form of wisdom it seems to have some kind of a you know thing but then when it comes to the real matter of standing against the things of the flesh or uh indulgence of the flesh it doesn't seem to have any power because only the truth has the power to encounter to change to renew and put to death things of the flesh right so the, while this it does it lacks the power because it's a it's a human command or a human tradition so um it's not from truth right so that's the thing so yeah i think we just need to respect see certain things we need to respect like um in a in a certain church i know most of the rural churches we you don't wear footwear in most of our homes we don't wear footwear inside respect that honor that it's no problem uh some some places okay you can't wear gold fine no problem. <laughs> you know it's okay just go but go minister share whatever yeah but in a certain place where you have the authority where you have the spiritual authority where you are the one who is maybe establishing the work and ministering there then you have the you know you can uh, you can share and uh, establish people in the truth so that's the thing yeah also in same chapter yeah uh, there is uh, two like little confusion for me yeah in 6 it's are written like uh, for if a woman is not covered mm -hmm. let her also be shown but if it is a shameful for a woman to be shown or said let her be covered yeah and when we read 15 yeah it says like uh, for women it's like her long hair is a cover for her so like what's a different pastor okay no um verse 6 he's talking about if a woman is not covered let her also be shown in the sense if a woman is not covering her head 
letter also it's uh, it's as the same as uh, uh, a woman who is who has shaved her head okay so he's bringing that parallel because there were women who were shaving their head uh, and who were part of the in that culture they were either adulteresses or not mainly adulteresses but prostitutes right they would especially the temple prostitutes they would shave their their, their head so so you know that it is shameful the kind of life they were living etc so so he's saying you know if woman does not cover head it is equivalent to that you're displaying that okay your uh, uh, why the reason he's saying is a woman who is of an immoral lifestyle let's say an adult uh, rebellious also living a life of a prostitute selling a body for you know for the sake of money would not cover her head they would not cover their head right so that is how they would be known that hey, i am uh, you know because how, how the uh, the covering of the head actually is like your your you know your you're not showing your face you're not showing your head and all that but then a woman who is a, who wants to sell her body for sex would would cover her, uncover herself so he's saying you know if you're not covering it's equal to that you know you know that that is you know that is that is how they would they they would live right that is how so so here so he's saying that um, so since it is shameful let her be covered verse 6 right then he talks about uh, the long hair the, the women naturally have a tendency to have long hair and it is given for her covering and it is it is something of beauty and a glory for her so um you know so so he's just he's just saying that you no know, it is it is describing that right so uh, contrasting that that with uh, the previous word what is say yeah, verse 14 nature itself teach you that you know, men don't normally have long hair and again you know uh, the men of that culture who were temple prostitutes and had long hair you know so yeah so he's talking about that so um, yeah so that's the thing so uh, so when he says okay uh, nature it's a, you know if a man has long hair it's a dishonor to him so but you look at a nazarene so nazarene wow they had long hair and most of the jewish men you know they they had long hair. so um so is obviously it's not that every person who has long hair you know is is dishonoring is not that so in that culture so we need to get back to that right um in that culture so um yeah yeah verse 6 is obviously for that culture definitely for that culture yeah they they are like the jewish culture where the women uh, where the married women would cover their hair and in the in the in the corinthian uh, culture also that women would cover their head yeah 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 so in a gathering you would have both so he is saying you know it's better for women to cover their head yes yeah so they are ident you know if the if the if the woman has a bald head you are identifying yourself as a person of that kind of lifestyle so so he's saying you know you cover your head yeah exactly exactly yeah so so that so we know that it's 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 um uh it's a matter of our heart right so this is more of a peripheral external thing but the thing is your external also displays your heart you know you can be rebellious and you can do certain things on the outside because this is how you are on the inside so he's actually um here it's a very you know it's a it's a cultural thing that he's addressing yeah right so um otherwise you just look at it you know from a natural standpoint what does covering of head do spiritually to a person like in today's time like 
is there anything that will happen spiritually does it become make a person more spiritual does it make a person more closer to god and if it is so are we not replacing what christ did are we not replacing the work of the holy spirit with something that is some fabric that you're putting on your head you know we just think about it in a natural way obviously it's no right so it has to do with uh, you know matter of the heart more than anything else right um similar thing also you know when it comes to um, jewelry and all that right uh, so again the same debate <laughs> right uh, uh, i think that's in timothy right uh, okay we want that but, um somebody said something peter pit i said peter pastor it should not be the outward adorning yeah thank you thank you about jewels so, jewelry yeah. yeah now about uh, let it not just be um you know the braiding of hair and so on and uh, yeah first peter 3 right do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging the hair wearing gold or um putting on a fine apparel rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the beauty of the gentle spirit and so on and also about sarah and how sarah obeyed abraham and etc but so so we know you know when we consider the old testament women and old testament times and the kind of you know wealth they had and the kind of way in which they adorned themselves well, they did wear jewelry they did wear you know gold etc so we make it sound as if gold itself is sinful right but uh, it talks about <laughs> heaven being paved with streets of gold so how are you going to walk on it <laughs> avoid heaven right so yeah yeah you had a question uh, yeah go ahead so my question is related to what brother nigil asked the question yeah. so we can tell like this like this what the scripture says but in kerala one day what happened is even still is happening so like some of the new gen church raised up and they were teaching about this and what the the older pastors said this like they are false prophets they are false teachers run away from them okay so the one who a, say that you can actually yes yes um you don't have to cover your yes, head yes 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 mm. it's up to you like god is looking at your heart not at your body how you are look so but this pastors made a big problem like these guys are false Mm. like on the last time the false prophets will write the they caught the scripture and they start preaching on against them uh so like regarding to his first year like how to talk to that kind of mm. pastors obviously it can't happen in one sitting you know so one has to have a journey you know be open for conversations be open have a relationship uh and uh yeah don't talk about them to others but actually have talk to them about this issue right so only then when people know your heart and when when they share their reason for why they are saying that and you share your reason will there be some kind of an understanding uh that is how things will change uh, otherwise you know people go on social media and say this person they you know saying this and then it will just create more and more hatred more and more division rather than actually solve it so you sit and talk to them and then say you know pastor can we just meet for breakfast can we have tea then they will open up and uh, you know share and probably they have some struggles also you know so it can bring about a lot of reconciliation when actually people sit down and talk yeah yeah ah yeah so yeah then mm yeah we can show share this reference huh oh. <laughs> yeah but this is a sum you know this is a summary of all that all it is like the word therefore when when we when you see it <laughs> yeah but you can you know see so, so when you already decided this is what my stand is then we can't do anything just have to say okay pastor please go ahead you know it's fine right okay sorry neena you have a question 
Uh, no, it's it's okay. Pa, we have uh, running out of time. Maybe we'll do it next week. Yeah, yeah, okay, we can no do go. it next week. So, yeah. Sure, sure. Thank yes. you. Okay, we'll wind up uh, today's session. We'll meet again next class. God bless. Bye bye.